Alrighty. We're going to do a little video. I'm going to uh, share a little bit about some ground hunting strategies I guess I have. I'm going to show you my ground hunting stuff. And uh, I'm no expert at ground hunting. I've killed deer off the ground. And uh, usually I kill... I hear Daisy May out there walking around. Usually I'll kill at least one deer a year off the ground. And uh, so anyway, and, and I'm slowly leaning towards ground hunting only. I really am. And when I say this part that I'm talking about is not stalking, this is setting up. Like, like I hunt feed trees with my climbers and stands, my lock-ons. I walk and find feed trees to hunt. And um, we're doing the same exact thing except they're not climbing a tree. And yesterday evening, I had a hunt yesterday evening, I was hunting on public land and I, I went in an area kind of cold. I hadn't been there in a while knowing that there's probably something in there, some acorns dropping somewhere. So I had my stand, all that stuff. I walked, probably made a half a mile loop and I found a pretty hot tree and I climbed on it. And uh, when I get, I mean, it's a little warm yesterday. I think it was 83. And when I get up the tree there, I'm not really sweated down, but I'm hot. Get my camera thing set up, everything set up. I go to uh, get an arrow on the string and all that, and I drop my finger tab. These uh, omnivores tabs are really, really good, but they are worthless if they're laying on the ground and you're in the tree. <laughs> so I had to climb back down, get my tab, then go back up, and by then I was hot and aggravated. I ended up seeing a cowhorn spike, and I would have shot him shores of the world, but he didn't come close enough. He was rambling and not uh, hungry. So uh, anyway... The frustration of just that alone makes me want, and, and what what made me so mad is I'm sitting up there looking around and there was a perfect, like five feet from the base of my tree was another big tree, big enough to cover my back, and there was a limb had blown down, perfect set up to ground hunt. And, uh, <laughs> but instead I toted all that stuff, uh, 20 pounds worth of stuff around and climbed a tree twice to hunt. So with that said, I, I'm, uh, I'm leaning more towards ground hunting. I do have some stands. Some, I'll put some stands in, in funnels that are I'm going to leave there. And uh, I'll be in and out of them several times. But as far as I'm trying to get away from toting a stand in the woods and climbing. And uh, it's going to be a challenge, I know. But I really feel pretty confident in it. I guess what I want to show you first is uh, the stuff I use. Okay, let's, let's do that. Alrighty, I got camera in hand instead of the tripod so I can show you this stuff. I have uh, basically, there's four seats that, I, that I'm going to use. I have uh, three of them right here. The other one is a good friend is going to, he's come up with a really good seat and he's going to start selling them after the first of the year. So I'm not going to show it right now. I'll wait till he gets all that rolling and then I'll maybe do a review on it. But right now I have my, my trusty old metal chair. The one I showed in a previous video, video it's just a fold-up chair. And actually it was sitting out here in the yard and a tree limb fell on it and put a big dent right there. That would have really hurt the top of your head. But uh, I'll put it in places that I, I may leave it. And uh, fold it up and hide it in and out if I go pretty deep in the swamp. But it's really comfortable. Next is, uh, I got the little little fold up chair this thing is actually surprisingly comfortable and uh i use that I, that's uh the the deer that i've killed off the ground that i've set up for and uh planned i guess you'd say a planned hunt i use that chair there then i got this little little one here i can it'll fit in your pack it don't weigh anything and this is where i'm if i'm doing a lot of walking and I just come up on a spot and say, man, I'm going to sit here. This, uh, this chair here is really, it's really surprisingly comfortable. It folds up, don't weigh anything. It's really comfortable, especially if you put it up against something you can lean against. So those are basically my three chairs plus the one that I'll show you later on. But, uh, and, uh, I mean, you know, it's, uh, the lighter one is not as comfortable. The heavier one is the most comfortable. That's kind of how it is, a trade-off, I guess. But, uh, you know, if you got a really hot spot and you're going to sit all day, there's none of them chairs or anything like carrying a climber. I can tell you that right now. And the, 
trouble of climbing and all that. And just say, how many times have you sat in a stand and you see a, a really good buck or a deer go by too far? Then you sit there a little while and there, there goes another one. How many times do you get out and go move if you're in a tree stand? Most time you set it out. Then you get it. You may go move for tomorrow, but with the, I mean, you just with this stuff here, you just pick up and go over there and sit down somewhere over there. It's uh, I've had that happen many times here, hunting one of my funnels that I climbed in before. I found the sweet spot in the funnel. I watched rack bucks go by three days in a row and was bullheaded and wouldn't move simply because it was a lot of work. And uh, in those, I was drilling trash trees with my woodpecker drill. And, uh, it, I mean, it was work to do it. And I said, well, sooner or later they come this way. They never did, so I moved and ended up killing three deer in there. But uh, the, the ground hunting has a lot of advantages, and, and I'm not really sure that the disadvantages are as big as we seem to, seem to think they are. We just don't ground hunt enough. I don't to get the bugs worked out of it. So uh, let's talk about clothes now. All right, I use, uh, now understand if I'm hunting pigs, most time I'm on the move. But if I were to set up in a place and it wasn't deer season, I, I would wear what I got, I'd wear whatever, flannel, whatever, it wouldn't. Camo is overrated, I'll say that two more times. It's overrated, overrated, it is. It's uh, something to spend your money on. I, I use it and buy it if it's pretty cheap. Especially early season when I'm going to wear a long sleeve shirt. I mean, you know, you can buy the camo shirts. They don't cost anything much. No more than regular clothes do. But on the ground, I think maybe you got to, I believe it, maybe not camo, but I believe hunting these southern deer that I hunt that are hunted hard, I believe you need some, uh, not necessarily camo, but some some better clothes. And here, uh, and, and granted, you could wear most any clothes. And the color don't so much matter, it just can't be shiny, is the word maybe, or, or bright. It can't glow, in other words. And and I think that's the most important thing. You can't have clothes that glow. And uh, I use, uh, this is like an old, so, somewhat of an old ghillie. I use that in lighter, lighter places like dog fennel fields or something. You know, this, this is sort of the color of, and I can tell you right now, I've had animals walk all over me wearing this. They didn't see me. And it's soft, doesn't make any noise. Noise is not your friend ground hunting, I can tell you that. But I mean, deer just seem to pick it up more than they do when you're in the tree. And you know how many times you get busted with a little slight noise when you're in the tree? On the ground, it's 10 times as bad. So this is for, uh, I use this for things this color. I just got this suit last year, and uh, I killed a deer on the ground with primitive bow and stone point wearing this, this kill suit right here. Really good stuff. I had a probably a three and a half year old eight point walk eight yards of me, look right straight at me, and wag his tail and walk off. I, I was unable to shoot him. He came to the wrong side of me. But it, my point is, he looked through me. He didn't see me. And... Uh, so that's the a suit I wear right there for that. You know, again, matching, trying to match the colors. There's a big difference in colors right here. And I think that you need to try to, to blend at least with what's around you. And there again, it's, it's, if I'm hunting pigs, this is fine. And uh, it's all about movement. It's, it can't shine. And it's, it's got to be really, really quiet because even though I'm hunting on the ground, I'm, I'm hoping for a 12-yard shot or less. And that's the excitement of it to me. And and, and I do believe it's a, easier to make a good shot at one than maybe a little farther, 15 yards, 20 yards, because, you know, you you got the whole, you, you, the vital's the same size, but you don't have to come down through the top where it's more narrow. And also, it's uh, if you don't get an exit, you're probably going to have a blood, better blood trail from the ground if you keep it in that lower third. If you're up high and try to shoot one in the lower third, you're liable to miss him or just one lunging. So anyway, this is my chairs. This is my little suits that I wear. And let's talk a little bit more about some, um, some clothes. 
All right, one thing that I believe is very important, your face shines. I mean, even standing out here, you can see it's kind of dull around me, but my face is glowing. Look at my hands. They're glowing. So I think that it's very important to, that you have gloves on or either something to, to get the glow off of your face. I always, when I'm walking, I'll have a glove on this hand right here. I mean, look at that. It's like you hardly see this red or black, but look at my hand glowing. It's very important. If you got, you know, if you're sitting there and the, the pig catches something or the deer catches something, you're not going to move. <laughs> I mean, that you're busted if, if, if you got it because it just sees, it, it moves, and they see it so well. So I think that face covering and, and your hands are very important to have covered or, or either some sort of something to dull them off. And I hunted with Brother John. I, I learned a lot from him in the woods, and we were going in pig hunting early one morning. And he went by, there was a, a pines. They burned the woods off around here a lot. I burned these woods we're standing in here last year. And he went by a pine that the bark was black on, and he scrubbed his hands on it like that and wiped his hands and went down his face. And even though it wasn't painted or nothing, it took the shine off of it. And... Uh, man killed countless animals on the ground. And so I, I, it's important that you do some stuff like that. You have to get the shine off. On my video, if you watch the video where I killed the stone point doe on the ground, there's a deer to my right. I killed the one that was in front of me on the left, but there's a deer to my right saw me. And after I got to looking and wondering what she saw, she saw my hand. I didn't have a, I had a, this hand covered, my bow hand, but I had nothing on this hand. And look, she was about, at this angle and so when I come up to shoot she saw that hand move and look how I mean look how that's glowing against my body right there so it's important to have your hands and face covered all right I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna this is the first part of these videos I, the next one we're gonna actually go in the woods and and find a spot to hunt and uh, so right now though I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just give you an idea of look through these trees right here about some setups all right, let's say we were gonna hunt this, uh, this big water oak right here. My, what a big one. And uh, say we were gonna hunt it. And uh, from the ground, the wind is, we gotta hunt on the right side of it over here. Oh, check this out right here. My lot fell over my post. See this old post here? Really cool stuff. Uh, I live at the end of the road, the swamp's behind me. And uh, a guy that lived here, he lived right down the road here. He died when he was like 60-something. And uh, 30 years ago, I talked to him. And there was a preacher that lived here in the early 1900s. And this, this is where his barn was at. He walked me out here and showed me this stuff. This is on my property now. And uh, this is all that's left of that homestead is the corner post to his mule barn. How about that? So anyway... I just saw that. I thought that was pretty cool. So we're going to hunt this tree here. And so we're going to need to hunt it on that side over there. I got my stuff sitting here. So let's walk over here. I want to show you something. So you got a whole lot of choices you could hunt. You could get back in that, back in there, behind the pine. Or in there in front of that pine. There's a whole lot of places. But let me let me assure you that I believe that the, the back cover is more important than the front cover. What I'm saying is you have something behind you. Like this big pine here. It's, it's wider than your shoulders. And it helps break up movement. And I, I, I firmly believe that. If you sit behind something, especially if it's got narrow gaps there you'll get picked off quick if you move. Say, look at those three trees right here. If you sit in front of them, you'll be good. If you were to sit behind them, in that little gap, your movement is easier picked up. How many times have you been in the woods hunting and you see a deer go through and he goes through and you catch it, you glimpse him through the cracks in the woods or the, you know, the, the openings in the, the between the trees you glimpse at it 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 more magnifies the movement I believe. Whereas if you're sitting in front of something like that, you can get away with movement. 
It just don't look natural behind it. It looks more natural in front. And there's all kind of places that you could get in here. I mean, there's like you could set in that hole right in there in those palmettas. It's got sun on it right now. That's the main thing you have to look at. You, you got to pay attention to how the sun hits you. You can't be in the sunshine. And uh, so know when you set up, not only do you want to set up for the wind, you also have to set up with where the sun, you got to think, well, I'm going to come hunt this this evening. Where's the sun going to be? Where is it going to cast shadows? Because I need to be in the shadows. So that's just something to think about right there. Yeah, and if, you're, if you come in and say, I'm going to hunt in front of this pine right here, go ahead and move all the leaves, you know, quieten it up right there around where your feet are going to be. You don't want to do that. It makes a scent. It opens up a ground scent. And deer are curious. You can go any any woods you go through that there's a lot of deer sign. If you if you'll scratch some uh, stuff around, make an opening, deer will step in it. If you come back there too later, there'll be deer tracks in it. They're curious to that smell of the new fresh dirt. So if you're gonna hunt this tomorrow, go ahead and fix this, or hunt it next week. Go ahead and scratch your ground cover places out. And I always would look at. I'm gonna fix this right here so I can. You know, I, I'll fix this side, but then I'll look in case the wind changes. I'll try to fix me something on the other side as well. I'd have me two sides to every hunting spot. That's my plan for the places that I'm going to hunt. And if you can, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to start just destroying the woods around it. You want it to be the same way it was when the deer came in here yesterday. So if you were going to, you know, trees fall all the time, limbs fall all the time. So if you were going to try to throw you a little something in front of you. Don't break it down right here under this tree you're hunting. Walk over there somewhere, break your one down, and, and it don't take much. You don't need to build a big blind to hide behind, but you do need to, you know, it's good to have a little something in front of you. I wouldn't put no tarps or, or a lot of people put burlap. I wouldn't put nothing like that. You don't want anything that's bringing sin in from somewhere else. But you could go over there, break you a couple of palmetto from, stick them in the ground. A lot of things you can do, but remember, don't get behind, don't get behind the big trees that you, you're using. Get in front of them and then throw you a little something in front of you for cover if you need to. But I also like the deer, say if you're hunting in a place and the deer are going to be in something thick like that. And you say, well, there's no way to hunt that from the ground. I think this is better the more I think about it because I can have a little bit of cover but the deer's moving around, and I think the biggest thing about getting the shot is drawing on the deer without him seeing you. So, I mean, this nose is, the ground hunting thing to me, the nose ain't that big a deal. I mean, I say not that big a deal, no worse than in the tree, because if you're 12, 15 feet in the air, or you're on the ground, if the wind's wrong, you're going to get smelled. It don't, it don't matter. And, uh... So I, I don't think that the scent part of it is as bad. I know people that climb 25 feet, but say they're going to beat the wind. You ain't going to beat the wind. You may, if he's right up close, I mean, they, it may be so, but to me, I would rather, I, I, don't, I don't climb more than 12, 15 feet hardly ever. But if he was going to smell me at that, he's going to smell me on the ground is my point. So the, the wind part is, is not a reason not to hunt on the ground. But in the thicker stuff right here, naturally, you know, it can be too thick. But if you, uh, you would find, I mean, if, the, if there's some cover in there, I would rather have cover out there because then the deer is going to go behead, hit his head behind something. I'll get to have a better chance of drawing on it. When I'm stalking pigs, I would rather be in cover than in the wide open because you stand there, let him get in some cover, and then shoot, you can gain a whole lot of ground before he pops out. But uh, we're, we're talking strictly now, though. We're talking about setting up on the ground you know, to sit there for evening and morning hunts just like you would in a tree, tree stand. So anyway, that's just a little bit of talk right now. We're going to go out into the woods. This is the first part. We're going to have several parts of this video, and hopefully, hopefully, the last one I'll have that northern mist, a uh, hill-style longbow laying across the dead animal and uh, with some success from our ground hunt. So with that said, I appreciate you all watching. Thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day. This is just some of the stuff I have to hunt with. And there again, like I told you, I have another chair that I'll be using, but I, can't, I don't want to post it right now until my, my buddy gets them out on the market to sell. And um, so, 
y'all y'all keep watching and i do appreciate you watching my videos right here i'm not a know-it-all by any means i'll to be honest with you this ground hunting thing is it's not new to me but i don't have a ton of experience at it but we're about to get a bunch of experience at it so we will uh follow along we may learn some stuff together right here i welcome your comments if you see anything that catches your eye that you think people can learn from put it up there where we can all you know we can it'll be, we can talk about it but uh i do know the key points of this first part is you can't be shiny anywhere no matter what clothes you wear you have to be quiet quiet is key and you're gonna have to be comfortable too you can, it's just like hunting in a lock on i told a guy one time i said how do you hunt in lock ons them things are uncomfortable and it was funny but i said you stand until you can't stand no more and then any kind of sitting down feels good <laughs> And I'm not, I mean, there'd probably be some standing up in these, you know, hunting on the ground and then uh, sit down. And I would actually encourage you to learn to be a good shot off of a chair because I believe that ground hunting, setting up on a feed tree or in a funnel is going to be, uh, you're going to shoot every time off, of, off the stool probably. So, so practice at that if you hadn't. All right, y'all uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.